and I'm so excited to share the Word of God with you. Uh, whenever I prepare the Word of God to deliver the message, uh, I'm the, the first now uh, receive the blessing from the Lord. Okay, uh, <clears throat> from Tuesday, I'm traveling abroad like about uh, over one month, so please remember, remember in your prayer. <clears throat> Okay, this evening I want to share about the different manifestation of grace. Different manifestation of grace. <clears throat> In our Christian life, grace might be the most you know, popular word. So many times we have heard about grace. In every situation we confess, oh, it is only by the grace of God. But more than that, we need to understand how the grace of God works inside of us. How much, you know, uh, how deep is the grace of God? How great is His grace? <clears throat> and there is only one grace. Actually, grace is not a teacher, a teaching, but, you know, grace is a person called. His name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, number one, uh, common grace. <clears throat> In Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, the Bible said that, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the, the righteous and the unrighteous. Right now, especially in Dubai, God sent his rain and <laughs> so much rain. So the Bible said he caused his son to rise on the evil and the good. There's no partial at all. God loved all the people. According to the John 3.16, the Bible said that God so loved the world. And he loved the evil one and also the good one. This, that, and in that case, we call common grace. God gives his grace to everybody. Amen. Right. <clears throat> and number two, <clears throat> saving grace. In our life especially, uh, we all know that you know, we are born by sinful nature. And we all have sins. And to set free from eternal hell, all kinds of religious trying by themselves. Many religious trying by obtaining, you know, they hope that one day they might be set free from eternal hell by obtaining of the law, by obedience to the law of their religious, and by, you know, leaving the practical of their religious teaching. But the bad news is that no one can obtain the law. And the Bible clearly said that no one is righteous, no one. But at the cross, Jesus gave his life. He took all of our sins. He paid the price of our, the penalty of sin. And he shed his blood so that, you know, we might be forgiven. There is only one way to set free from eternal hell. It is by, only by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. By only the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Ephesians 2 8, the Bible says that, For it is by grace you have been saved, not by our performance, not by our good works. It is by, for it is by grace we have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. We have no reasons to boast for our salvation. It is only by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And number three, the grace of God, you know, manifests in different ways. After we got saved, and I call it the saving, uh, the sanctifying grace. In Titus chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, for the grace of God has appealed, the grace of God appealed, that offers salvation to all people. Number one, the grace of God, you know, offers salvation to all people. Not only that, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. Hallelujah. There is power in the grace of God. There is power to deny so that you can deny and you can say to no. You can say no to the ungodliness and worldly passions. Not only the end to live self-control. Self-control means control yourself. <laughs> But, you know, very simple. But without the help of the Holy Spirit, it's not easy. Amen. In eating and drinking in every area of life, you know, this is the byproduct of abiding in Christ, abiding in His words, abiding in His love. 
we cannot produce the fruit by ourselves but you need to abide in his love you need to abide in jesus christ and let his word abide in you and then in the due time he will the grace and the holy spirit will produce the fruit of the holy spirit amen no uh, so it the grace of god teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-control upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope until resurrection until sorry uh uh rapture, rapture. <laughs> until the rapture come you know and this grace will teach us say no to ungodliness and worldly passion and to live self-control and to live upright and godly lives in this present age amen while we wait for the blessed hope for many christians they believe and they took the grace of god just for salvation but after we got saved you know the grace of god walk inside of us the grace teach us how to live and how to live holy life how to live in self-control how to live upright and godly lives in this present age yeah many times you know we have we ever heard about the christian life how to live number one two three four five and so on and so on and we have learned many practical you know principle of the religious but without the grace of god you cannot live this supernatural christian life only by we can live only by the grace of god amen because the bible said that the grace of god appealed the grace of god was given to us for what number one for salvation to all people number two to teach us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions not only that while we wait for the blessed hope the appearing of the glory of our great god and savior jesus christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all weakness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own ego to do what is good wow hallelujah and the grace of god caused us you know the eager to do what is good this is the byproduct of the holy spirit the help of his grace <clears throat> not only that uh in philippines chapter 2 verse 13 said you know for it is god who works in you inside of you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose in some tra translation the bible you now says god works inside of you to will and to do the good things so that you can fulfill his purpose in your life as we know the law of moses dealt with the outward appearance the outward fruit the action the law trying the law was trying to change the outward thing just as the religious they are teaching their teaching was so much focused on the outward appearance to change how to live right how to do right but grace changed from inside out amen grace change your heart like uh, Zacchaeus he is the tech collector and he was you know uh, downcast by many people but when he met with Jesus without condemning him without correcting him you know he encountered the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ so for Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus you know what will be mean for the grace of Jesus Christ for his life for one I study about you know the life of Zacchaeus at the moment they meet each other Jesus called him by his name amen they never had a friendship on online you know Facebook they never knew each other but Jesus never invite you know Zacchaeus in his uh, social media but Jesus just him knew by his name known by just his name amen and he just called Zacchaeus 
I'll visit to your house. I'll stay at your house. We'll eat together. We will have a great fellowship together at your house. So for him, it's a great privilege for him because he knew that he was a sinful person. You know, nobody want to talk with him. Nobody want to hang around with him. But Jesus, you know, for his expectation was just to meet with Jesus and take some, you know, selfie and that, that's all. But more than that, you know, Jesus chose to follow with him and Jesus chose to show his love even though he was unworthy. He just visited his house and they just ate it together and they just love and, you know, fellowship together. For him, you know, the grace means Jesus loves just the way he is. He was. Jesus accepted him just the way he was. Amen. No condemnation, no. But he just showed his grace. He just showed his love. He just showed his acceptance to him. That grace, that love totally changed the heart of Zechariah. And he became a, a different person. Hallelujah. When he encountered the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord was trying to change the, our appearance, you know. And many times the religious encourage us uh, how to live right. But when you experience, when you encounter the true grace about our Lord Jesus Christ, grace will teach you, grace will transform you from your heart. Not just the outward, but you will have the right heart. Amen. And grace will teach us, you know, the right believing. And then you can live right and you will live right. <clears throat> Number four, <clears throat> serving grace. <clears throat> grace manifests in, you know, in every area of your life, especially the grace of God is given to us so that we can serve other people. <clears throat> in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, Paul mentioned that, uh, for I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God, but by the grace of God, according to you know, his a human nature, he said, I am not qualified to be called as apostle because I'm the person that persecuted the church. But grace qualified me. Hallelujah. Grace made me qualify, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Hallelujah. And His grace to me was not without effect. The grace of God is not in vain. He said that God gave me His grace, but this grace lives inside of me. It affects something. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace to me was not without effect. There was a great effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. I tried harder than all of the apostles. I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I. But it is not me, he confessed. I am not the person that working harder than all of the apostles. I have preached in many areas of the Asian and the Europe. But it is not me, he said that. But the grace of God that was with me. Hallelujah. He mentioned that the grace of God caused me to do the great things of God. The grace of God gave me power to do the will of God. For that purpose, the grace is given to you as well. Hallelujah. And you have received the grace of God. At the moment you receive and you believe in Jesus Christ, you have the grace of God. Amen. Not only that, in Rome chapter 12, verse 4 to 8. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. We have legs, you know, arms, eyes, ears. We have different kinds of organs, different kinds of body, different kinds of members. But we have different, just like, you know, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Amen. We receive, at, at, at the moment, you know, you believe in Jesus Christ. As at the moment you receive Jesus Christ, you receive the gifts from the Lord. In Jesus Christ, there, was, there are different kinds of gifts. 
and all the spiritual gifts are also, you know, the way that, the, you know, the way God manifests His grace toward us. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. So, the Bible calls, you know, all our talents, you know, as a gift, not a reward. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve, like ushering or whatever, you know, like cleaning, whatever. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is eating, eat a lot. <laughs> if it is to show mercy, if your gift is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Hallelujah. So you can glorify God through your gifts. The God's given gifts, all the gifts are manifest from the grace of God. Amen. So all the gifts that we are using in, you know, the purpose of His glory, uh, the glorification of our Lord Jesus Christ, and it's come, the, the, uh, it's come from our Lord Jesus Christ. The more you use the gift, the more you multiply, you know, you give, it will glorify, it will bring His name glorify. Amen, glorification. That's why Paul, you know, encouraged his spiritual son, Timothy, and to start up your faith, you know, do not neglect your gift to start to start up the gifts and use it. So he encouraged him. So uh, we have a different gifts so that we can contribute our talents, our potential, our you know the blessing that God gives to us, and we can contribute to the church, our community, so that you will be a great blessing for many people. So in that way, the grace of God manifested through our life. Hallelujah. And number five, and sustaining grace. Like Paul, as he persecuted, you know, the believer of Jesus Christ, he was also persecuted by, you know, religious people after he converted. And in 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 27, he mentioned that, you know, what he was facing in his, in his time. Are the servant of Christ, I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder. Being in prison more frequently. Being flogged more severely. And being exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Wow, five times. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. No lightning, lows, no sun and no moon. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, and danger in the country, in the village, in danger at the sea, and in danger from false believers. Not only that, I have labor and toil and have often, often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have got, after gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Wow. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak and I do not feel weak. Even though he was you know, facing all kinds of uh, uh, difficulties, temptation, trials. But he, he said that, you know, and I do not feel weak. Who is led into sin and I do not inwardly burn. Because, you know, in Second Corinthians 4, Verse 8 and 9, he mentioned that we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. What is the secret you know, of his life? He mentioned in verse 1. Therefore, since through God's mercy, we have this ministry. And in other translations, I am the one who carried the gospel of grace 
in his he called i have this ministry what is ministry the new covenant ministry in second corinthians the whole chapter chapter 3 he mentioned about the new covenant of god the greater glory of god that is in the new covenant hallelujah and he said therefore since through god's mercy we have this new covenant ministry as i am the messenger of new covenant ministry we do not lose heart the ministry of new covenant the gospel of grace make him stronger the grace of god work inside of him and he can do harder than all the other apostle he he confessed i am not the one who performed i am not the one who you know doing this great thing the grace of god that is in me hallelujah that's why i want you to know that you know you have received the grace of god so that you can serve other people amen you have the different and you know unique talent unique gift that inside of you start up and use it for the glory of our lord jesus christ and many times paul was praying you know just like us oh lord i can hold on you know i want to give up lord remove all the obstacles all the problems all the trials all the difficulties all the circumstances but the answer of god is that you know in second Corinthians 12 7 to 10 therefore in order to keep me from being conceded i was given a throne in my flesh a messenger of satan to torment me three times i pleaded with the lord to take it away from me but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness therefore when he heard when he received the answer from the lord you know god revealed you know the secret things about his grace god is not giving his prayer you know request but god gave the better answer to him hallelujah therefore you know god said my grace sufficient for you i will not remove the throne from your flesh but i will give you the power hallelujah my grace is sufficient for you my power is made perfect in weakness god make him strong by giving his grace so that he can sustain and he can go through hallelujah Amen. therefore i will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that christ's power may rest on me like peter the whole night he was dropping his net you know he was born on you know the boat he knows about the fish about the river he was so ex very exported in you know uh, catching the fish but that night he never catch any fish at all while he was trying you know in the middle of the night jesus never visited him but when he surrendered you know and he's ready to go back to his home and jesus start to show his grace to his life amen firstly he ran he entered into his boat number two and he listened the message of our lord jesus christ and number three god just you know jesus just showed that you know water is not the source of blessing your net is not the source of blessing your boat is not the source of blessing there is you know in my word there's blessing he just want him to know hallelujah he himself is the source of every blessing and the bible said when he saw you know uh the two boats filled full with a fish and then he just and he just realized oh jesus is the source of every blessing hallelujah and when he experienced when he uh encountered the grace of god and he decided to follow our lord jesus christ and he confessed that lord i'm a sinful person depart from me i'm not worthy to be by your side so in our life in order to receive in order to manifest the grace of god in our life we need to learn how to surrender the flesh hallelujah that is why for christ's sake i delight in weaknesses in insults 
in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And number six, overcoming grace. We are called to rule and reign in this life through our Lord Jesus Christ. But the sad thing is that many Christians we are defeated, you know, by poverty, under the power of sickness, the power of sins, failure, sins and curse. Actually, you know, the original plan of God is that, you know, so that we will reign in this life to Christ. That's why Jesus came to save us and gave his life. Amen. <clears throat> In Ephesians 2, 8, not only in Colossians 2, 6, no. we see that we begin this race of salvation by grace through faith. And not only that we run daily by grace through faith. Not only that in, you know, Timothy, the Bible mentioned that. And we finish by grace through faith. That's why grace is God's generous favor to both undeserving sinners and needy saints in every days of our life we need his grace we need to depend upon him hallelujah 100 percent actually living in the grace you know living in living in the grace means that you know totally trust in the lord in romans chapter 5 verse 17 there is two keys to reign and rule in life. For if by one man's offense that reign by one, his name is Adam, how much more they which receive, let us read together. For if by the trespass of one man that reign through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. When you are under Adam and Eve, that's reign. But when you under the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and when you receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of His righteousness, and you can reign and rule in this life, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 6, verse 14, said then, For sin, sorry, for sin shall not longer be your master. Sin shall not dominion over you, because you are not under the law, but under grace. Because law is the power of sin. But when God accomplishes and when Jesus fulfilled the requirements of the law and he said, it is finished from the time on. You are redeemed from the curse of the law. And from that moment, we are living under the grace of God. When you are living under the power of sin, you cannot resist the power of sin. If you like it or not, you need to obey the law of sin. But when you are living under the grace of God, you are totally set free from the power of sin. Sin shall not dominion over you. Sin has no power over your life. Amen. Because there is more greater the resurrection power living inside of you. The Holy Spirit living inside of you. Now you are free for what? To do the will of God. To do the will of God. To serve other people. Amen. You, now you can live in holy life. Now you can follow your Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And He is will be done in your life because you have the greater power in your life. Amen. Amen. Not only that, the Holy Spirit will lead you and He will teach you and He will empower you. He will use you mightily. Amen. Amen. In Philippians 4, 11 to 13. And usually we are, you know, uh, we are, we, all the time, we just read that uh, verse 13. I can do everything, you know. But beforehand, there's uh, the secret things that, you know, Paul mentioned in this scripture. 
I am not saying this because I'm in need. For I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. No matter what. I'm not afraid because I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. Wow. And I know that it is to have plenty. <laughs> Philippians 4, 11 to 13. I know what it is to be in need. What is poverty? What is lack? What is all about lack? I have learned, he said that. And I know what it is to have plenty. Yeah, in Cape, you know, uh, a lot of money. And you know, I have learned what is plenty, riches. Not only that, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well, feed or hungry. Yes. Amen. As we know, sometimes as a minister, when we travel and when we visit to our church member, they love us so much and, you know, they fed us with the best food, you know. But many times, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> we have no food to eat. You know, Paul confessed that. Whether well fit or hungry, and I have learned in everything, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through Him who gave me strength. I can do all things. Hallelujah. Amen. All things mean, you know, to be in need and to have plenty and uh, well fed or hungry, living in plenty or in poverty. All these things. No matter what, you know, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances because there is the grace of God inside of me. And the grace empower me. Hallelujah. Through that grace, through that Jesus Christ, I can do all these things. I can do all these things. I can do all this through Him who gave me strength. Hallelujah. So the grace, you know, cause us and the grace help us to sustain in the difficult you know, the difficult times, not only that, the grace causes us to overcome all the obstacles, all the spiritual battles. No matter what, in all circumstances, you are called to rule and reign. You have the power to overcome all the kinds of sickness, the poverty, all the needy situation, whatever you may face. You are the overcomer. Hallelujah. You are the more than conqueror. Amen. Amen. So when you reign, sickness, poverty, fear, cause, demon, the power of sickness cannot reign because through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible said that those who receive the abundance grace of God and the free gift of the righteousness of God. That's why there's no limitation in the grace of God. Even in John 1, 16 and 7, the Bible said that grace upon grace. Amen. The more you hunger, the more you humble, and the more you live in humility, the grace will flow into your life. Amen. The Bible encourages us that, you know, you need to receive the abundance of grace so that you can reign in this life. To reign in this life, we need the abundance of grace. But the religious people teach that, oh, the grace is the license to sin. No, the grace is the power to overcome all kinds of sin in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. So in 1 Peter 5, 6 to 7, the Bible said that God resists the proud one. But God gives the greater grace to the humble. Amen. If you are humble enough and if you are willing to receive the grace of God, if you are you know, totally trust and if you are totally depend on the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ, the pure grace will manifest through your life in many different ways. Hallelujah. Amen. Through the gift so that you can serve other people. And there, in, in the due time, you know, like especially for this time, the young people, you need, you know, the sustaining grace. Not only that, you need, you need the overcoming grace for this situation. Hallelujah. Amen. He will not forsake us. He's with us. And He call us. And He give His power. And He pour His grace to our life. So that 
we can reign, we will reign in this life through our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Amen.